How's it going today? Welcome to the Mad Science Lab in the backyard. Here are at least, I think there are uh, probably not quite, but um, there are a hundred little transistors. I've got a project I need to uh, repair and this is the way the circuit's laid out. The, I need a pair of these transistors but they need to be matched. The gain needs to be matched. It would be very helpful to the circuit. And Sitting down and picking this apart doesn't look like a lot of fun. Um, originally I was going to use this. This is a, a Heath kit and this is a, a IT18 transistor checker or tester and it really isn't. It's more of a... I don't know how to explain it. It basically tests the gain of transistors and tests the leakage. Um, you pick you know, what type of transistor is and, uh, and you hook the leads up. A lot of transistor testers, um, the leads don't matter. You can figure them out like uh, some of the BK transistor checkers uh, which I've got a couple of work just great for this, but they don't do anything for testing transistors as far as likeness, you know, so I'm going to have to go through all these transistors and literally write down the gains, which I've started doing here in this law. I lost interest in this really quick. I'm not going to do this a hundred times. And I need, well, I would like to find one, two, three, four, five, six, I'd like to find eight transistors of similar nature. Well, that's not going to happen. But on this, on this particular machine, and there's nothing wrong with this, it's just it's going to be a bit tedious. First you have to hook, out, hook it up right. And let's see, the base was green, if I remember right. The emitter was white, which, you know, there, there's no, at least to me, there's no rhyme or reason that they pick some colors. Other than they had this cable and pick some colors. Then you got to pick the right type of transistor, NPN. This is... I don't know, one or the other. It's a P or P NPN transistor. Then basically you use this calibrate knob to zero this meter out over here. I mean, you're going to read the beta or the gain on the top or the, the HFE. So we calibrate this. And you can look this up. This is actually a relatively, a relatively easy circuit. There's probably more in the switching than there is the actual circuit. There's nothing wrong with it, um, just it, 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 it's a bit fiddly and not exactly conducive to maybe day-to-day -day troubleshooting. Usually people just want to know if the thing's good or not, you know. Have I got a good or bad transistor? And actually, most times, unless you have a leaky transistor or something thermally unstable or one of those fuss pot things, most of the times you can figure this out in circuit, most of the time. So anyway, you calibrate this zero it on the line there then you punch the test button which is here it's in the cal it's spring loaded so it's always in the cal position and then it reads the beta or gain now if it's too far downstream which this one just about is it's past 100 you can adjust this beta multiplier and whatever the reading is is, is will be multiplied by 10 so it'll bring you it bring it up into the, the scale a little bit better see here it's 200 in sum Well, as you can see, this is all going to be very fussy. Now, I could speed this up by building a little jig just to plug this transistor into, but every one of these I'm going to have to calibrate and uh, adjust these and write this down and, and, and write the gain down. You know, on I, I've been doing it. These these were for machine insertion. That's the way they came to the manufacture. Not my idea of a hot time, but I've been writing those gains down on there. What a pain! So this works, but not the way I want it to. And uh, one thing that's a bit of a, a kind of a downer on this, this only uses a volt and a half battery, which doesn't sound like a problem right off the bat, but it is. Because it, it te it's testing the, the transistor's gain kind of in this circuit and not the circuit I want. It's no big deal though. So 
you know, if you find one of these for 10 bucks, it's actually a pretty handy little toy. And it does sort of test transistors in circuit. And it does test the leakages. Uh, only my bigger BK meter tests the leakages. Well, back to this little annoyance. Okay, um, another thing you can do is um, these are these are these little transistor uh, component testers actually. They're little microprocessors. This is the MK168 transistor checker. These are actually PIC controller, um, and you hook things up. These are actually pretty smart. They're relatively cheap. And these do tell you the gain of transistors, but again, they only kind of tell you the gain of the transistor, the beta, in the circuit here. So you punch this, doesn't matter how you hook it up, it says the beta is uh, 216, well we determined it was about 200 there, so this is a little bit better, more accurate than this. Now, I could step through here, and I have been. I went back and I started stepping through here, and this is a lot more. Uh, this this method is a lot more accurate. I don't know if you can see that, but still a bit tedious. You know, I really I just want to find some transistors. I don't want to invest my life in here. And to be really honest, I'm kind of uh, this project is a billable project, so I'm yeah. I mean. This is one of those things where you're having to do something specialized. Do you bill a customer? Do you not bill a customer? I don't know. Okay. Well, I came up with another idea. I looked at the circuit real carefully, and I'm kind of... I don't know if you can see this. Let me, let me get up off my butt. Okay. It's a bit wonky, but it'll do. The circuit I'm using this in really doesn't care how much gain there is, per se. It, any good transistor circuit um, shouldn't be that picky where, if you, where you need to select the gains of transistors, any decent circuit. You, you, you're designing that out of there. Um, there's like a minimum and you design the minimum or design something even less than that. And then you can put any transistor out of that type in there and it works just fine. Really, um, all I'm interested in doing is matching the transistors. I need I need eight similar ones. Well, if you look at this, this is for an NPN and it doesn't show it very well. And the pencil's breaking. Transistor. What I'm doing here is I don't care about the, the gains of the transistors. And actually, I'm not even measuring the gain of the transistors. I'm measuring whether they're, the two transistors are alike. So you've got a bipolar power supply and it goes through, this is 39K, and this is just any old diode. All you're doing is pulling it to ground, to 6 tenths ground, and then you're applying it to the collector. The base is grounded, and then the emitter is fed through the negative uh, 12 volts. You could, this would be a plus and minus 12 volt bipolar power supply. Plus and minus 15 would work, and these are like 100K resistors. So basically, you're making two similar circuits. You're sharing the, uh, the collector voltage with the thing. So you hook your meter up where the junction of these emitter resistors is and if one transistor has a different gain than the other it'll show up here and it'll move the meter now these two resistors really need to be cleverly matched this doesn't matter because it shares the collector the base is shared but the emitter is a different story one thing you could do is you could um, you could put a little switch in here and flip these two resistors over and it would exchange the two resistors and then but leave the res leave the transistors the same and you could kind of see um, how far off that was and it would be part of your test actually the closer you get these you can get some precision resistors they're cheap enough you know and since I'm just matching transistors, and I don't really care, I'm make, making them similar. I don't care so much about the gain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. And what I'm gonna do is uh, probably build one of these into the reference. I'll put two sockets there and just go merrily about my way comparing them. Now this doesn't work so good if you're, you know, if you're just comparing them. You don't know the gains. So everything's compared to your reference transistor. You know, here you can actually write down a number and uh, that type of thing. So there's a little bit of a balance. So you can, you know, you can use the Heathkit transistor checker. 
tug of the game. You could build a circuit to tell you the game here too. Um, you could use that little transistor tester which will tell you the game. You could actually build a circuit and actually measure the gain. The beta or the gain or the, the HFE is a, is, a, is a ratio between the current on the base and the emitter. So there you go. So that's what I'm probably going to do and this, this will speed this up and that's something I from time to time even though you don't see me fiddle with too many transistorized circuits on my channel a bit modern for me uh, I do actually do quite a bit with them but most of it is so boring that you know nobody cares anyway I thought you might be interested in this little this little device and you could put a couple LEDs on this was this is something you could build up on a chunk of perf board I mean literally probably about like that there's you know three resistors a diode and some sockets and some sort of jacks or little binding posts and then you would want a couple you know put your resistor and your diode here and your power supply there and your ground there and then your other resistors there and, you know you could put a couple jacks there or bring them over to the edge it doesn't even matter how you hook the meter up all you're trying to do is the closer to zero the meter shows the, the better the match is. So there you go. Have fun. Take her easy. Have a good day.